Hey, I'm Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my favorite mechanism in the digital version, the initial version, this first version of the game Dwarf Romantic. Here's what Dwarf Romantic looks like on the on Steam, which is where I played it. This is an image from from online, but it looks very similar to the uh, the, the kingdom, the the place that I built in my game. Um, although my score was much lower than the score in this game. So I have played the tabletop version, which is a, a cooperative version of Dwarf Romantic, and it has many of the same mechanisms as the digital version. But the digital version is really charming. I really love the art. I love the ability to, to zoom very close in and zoom back out. There comes alive through little boats that move around, birds that fly around, people that, that walk around that poke out of the houses. I love that. I love the aesthetic of this game. I mean, look at the art. It, it's just perfect. I, it, it looks fantastic. Um, the core mechanism of the game is that you are trying to complete goals with these tiles. So you draw this tile, you can rotate it however you want and put it on the board in the hopes of completing a goal. And a goal might be like have a river that has uh, a, a, that has four tiles of, of river in it. Or uh, there are certain tiles that count the exact number of trees on the tile. So have, you know, 50 trees. And so the game is counting those trees for you as far as I can tell. Um but the, and yeah, in fact, this one down here, this this has like 200 plus trees, or it wants 200 plus trees to complete that goal. This wants 12 plus houses, I believe. Could be tiles, could be houses. I'm pretty sure it's houses. Um, but the game does that. The digital game does that counting for you. The thing that I found that I really enjoyed about the game that I forgot was in, and maybe maybe or maybe not, it's in the tabletop version of the game. But you're you're basically trying to get the highest possible score, and you do that by continually placing tiles and achieving these goals. And you, uh, you're the game ends when you run out of tiles. Currently, this player has 177 tiles. They already have 8,000 points, which is awesome. Um, but you can't. There's no way to get more tiles except by completing goals. So when you complete certain goals and reach certain achievements, that's when you unlock more tiles. When you get to add more tiles to that stack and prolong the round. I really liked this. I really liked this idea that I was trying to just keep going a little bit further and that I was doing that by doing things that the game already told me were important to do by completing these goals, completing these achievements. And then I got to, got to jam more tiles in there to keep on going, try to go further and further, make my kingdom bigger and bigger and bigger. That felt really good. I love that. I love that element of, of extending the game. And it was a good reminder for me that this is a good mechanism in tabletop games as well. The idea of trying to extend the round a little bit further, take one more turn, get a few more cards in your deck, a few more tiles to use. And that in itself is a great mechanism in my toolbox to use in future games. So if you can think of any other digital or tabletop games that use that mechanism of prolonging the game by getting more stuff that you need as the timer for the game, uh, let me know about that in the comments below. I'd love to hear about that. That's my thoughts on Dwarf Romantic. If you, I only played it for about an hour, um, and I got a, a great experience from the hour that I played. But if you've gone really deep into Dwarf Romantic and unlocked some things that I could not have seen in the first hour, let me know about them in the comments below. I'd love to hear about the things that you love that I did not discover. Thanks.